Feels like I just ate a lemon. My mouth is like so numb right now. <laughs> Fuck it, we're going with that intro. Hey everyone, it's me, Eric. <laughs> I'm Michelle. And I just got done talking for a long time about misery. <laughs> so let's keep talking about horror films. And this is kind of an interesting one because I knew that was only a matter of time until we started repeating films mm -hmm. for uh, the post streak out reaction. Eventually, we were just going to do a theme where something we had already talked about would line up too well. And listen, this week it was rough to not do that because I know we already reviewed The Shining. I know we already reviewed The Thing. And this week's theme is being trapped in a location that you cannot leave. And those are the two most famous trapped in a location that you cannot leave horror films ever. So it's like, we're probably going to have to do that, but I don't want to repeat films just yet. However, we have A, not done this film yet. Come on, Peach. <laughs> we have A, not done this film yet for the post streak out reaction. So it is new for that. We reviewed this film when it came out in theaters. Yes, but B, I did not see it yet, so... You have not seen it. So this is different because you haven't gotten to see it. And C, we didn't talk about the ending when we reviewed the film the first time because I was like, I don't want to spoil it for you, and the film is so new, and the ending is so good. <laughs> the ending is so good. I want y'all to go out there and watch it. I'm not going to spoil this for anybody. So this will be different because A, it's my second time viewing it, and your first time doing it, and B, we're actually going to get to talk about the ending yes. this time. Uh, but okay, everybody knows my opinion on this. I love this film. What did you think of it? I also enjoyed it, and I can understand why you enjoy it. Yes. Because, um, like, it's not, like, a full horror movie. It's, like, a it's, horror comedy. It's definitely a horror comedy. It is definitely a horror comedy. In fact, uh, all along, long, I've been hearing from people out there who have been saying that they really enjoy the post-week reactions. They look forward to it every single year. And A... Thank you guys, because this is a lot of work, and it gives me energy to hear you guys say, like, yeah, but we actually enjoy it, and I look forward to it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate those words of confidence so much. Um, but uh, the other thing I've been hearing from people is, the reason I like the post got reaction is because I don't like horror films. I can't watch horror films. They freak me out too much. So I enjoy hearing you guys talk about these things. Uh, and I'm totally, I totally understand that, and I... I'm so glad to hear people say that because I think that is also meant to kind of be like the point of Thor you Ween every single mm -hmm. year. Thor you Ween is all basically in celebration of Halloween, but I know there are people out there who's like, well, I kind of want to celebrate Halloween, but I'm kind of freaked out by horror films and I can't watch them and I don't really like anything spooky or scary. How can I celebrate Halloween if I don't really like any of that things? Oh, this guy being a jackass on camera <laughs> uh, talking about these spooky, scary things. I can enjoy that at least, and I'm glad that I can provide that for people. Uh, but I will say to all of you out there who have been saying, I don't like horror films, I would still say give this a shot. Because it's not that freaky. No. It's tense. There are tense moments. But if you can enjoy, like, a crime thriller or something, like, if you can enjoy just a regular thriller film, uh, something where tensions run high but it's not really scary, you might still enjoy this. There is some gore in it. Yes. But it's only, like, two gory scenes. There's only, like, two gory scenes, and the second gory scene isn't even that bad. It's really just the first one. If you're watching this... When it gets to the moment when she's in the barn, if you have a problem with gore, when it gets to the moment when she's in the barn, there is a moment where someone fires a gun, immediately skip ahead by two minutes. <laughs> pause, the, pause the video, skip ahead by two minutes, because that is the one scene in which I'm like, this is a little bit too gory in here. This is a little bit too much. But I do like how they balanced out like the... Uh horror and gore with like the comedy the comedy in here is so freaking good the and thing like, you always said like a good horror movie always like gives you like a moment of relief yes you need what is known as the good laugh it is that moment where like your tensions are so high that if you don't relieve that tension people will just get numb to that tension uh and so uh you need like that moment of levity at mm -hmm. some point in time to make people go ah oh, like just get that sigh of relief so that way you can punch them in the gut all over again this film is great at that mm -hmm. this film will have you tense and laughing in the same moment <laughs> uh like there is okay i have now given the people out there who have not seen this film like the little like okay it's really good and if you are not a fan of horror and you want to avoid the gore scene, that's the scene that you really need to avoid. I've given you that warning, so tune out now if you think that you might end up seeing this, because now we're just going to kind of go, like, full spoilers yeah. on the thing. Uh, the moment where the butler is driving her back to the house, and she's tied up in the back, 
and she's getting up and she's trying to kick her way free, but he can't hear because he's sh- because he's singing to the music. But the family is still watching him yeah. on the phone, and they're like, "Look behind you! Look behind you!" And she's still trying to get her way free. That is an amazing way of like having a comedic scene and a tense scene in the exact same moment. Peach, you really enjoy these claps. All right. Uh, but yeah, and there's so many moments like that. Uh, or like the moment, okay, I mentioned this earlier, but the moment when she's in the barn and then the little kid comes in mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, Georgie, Georgie, it's, it's okay, Georgie, okay. Listen, you gotta get out of here because like it, she's being hunted by all the adults. So she's like, well, the kid's fine. Kid then pulls out a gun and shoots her in the hand. Yeah. And she's got a hole like right, mm-hmm. what, sorry, you can't see that way, but like right there in the middle of her palm. And she's looking at her like, ah. Uh, and then she just punches the kid in the face and knocks him out. That is a great, like, oh, man, like, that is so shocking and so tense. Ah, ha, ha, she punched that kid. Uh, <laughs> you deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing is, like, the entire family is fucked up, and that includes the kids. There is like, that great moment in here. I'm going to put you down. Now, yeah, you're, you're getting fussy, Peach. Yeah. There's that great moment in here where it's the brother and the sister are having to move the bodies of the maids who they who each of them they killed on their own. Yep. Uh, except for one. Uh, which I think the maid killed herself on that one by accident. Yeah. Like um, if if it wasn't the bride who got killed, it was usually an accident. So. Yes. Uh so uh they are moving the maids and they're throwing them into the goat pit. And the brother saying, This is all so fucked up and this is so wrong. Listen, if we die because we don't do this, then we all kind of deserve to die for doing this. And then she goes, my kids don't. And that is a great moment to turn to the audience because the, the sister has been a joke the entire film. She's been, like, every single character in here is a joke. Yeah, like, every very much character- an exaggeration of, like, what the rich people stereotypes. Yeah, stereotypes, <laughs> plural. Plural. Because that's the great thing. Every single member of this family is not a rich person stereotype. It's a different rich person stereotype. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going down the chiclet, the chiclet, the, yeah. Chicklet. Like, Chicklets, yum. <laughs> yes. You're going through a pack of chicklets. Uh, <laughs> and you're... You know, did I say this was our third review of the day? Um, you're going down the, the checklist of every single rich person stereotype, and every single member of this family is that to the exact right extent. And she is like, the doped up, I have all this money, and I never had to grow up. Uh, stereotype, and you think she's nothing but a joke, but then she has that moment of my kids don't deserve it. And it's like, holy shit, she actually cares about her kids, and that's a human thing to just suddenly throw in this character. And you can see the brother who just said, like, yeah, we all deserve to die, having to stop and think, oh shit, yeah, I guess we don't. But then they find the kid who got knocked out there in the barn, and he says, what are you doing? He says, I saw that lady, so I shot her because everyone else was trying to, oh, that's okay, honey, that's okay. And then you can see the brother immediately having to think again. Oh fuck, the kids are gone too. The kids are just gonna repeat this cycle over and over like again. Like the kids are very impressionable. Yeah. So. I mean the kids the first time we see them, they're running around in the mask that we yeah. saw them wearing in the flashback. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. But like I also noticed that like their parents like tucked them into bed and like saying and like give them like because like they didn't want them involved with the game and yeah. everything. So it's like, okay, they have some morals. That's good, but eventually they're gonna find out this shit. <laughs> this film starts off with uh, what are the two brothers' names? Alex uh, and Daniel. Alex and Daniel. Thank you. I got the A and the I got the D, which for me is very impressive. <laughs> uh, Alex and Daniel. You see them when they were kids, and they're running around trying to figure out what's going on. And I think it was Alex ends up hiding Daniel uh, in the closet and going, "Just stay no, there." I think it was Daniel who hid Daniel Alex. Daniel hides Alex. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hide him in the closet, and just saying like, "Okay, just stay in there. It's just, just, it's gonna be okay. Just stay in there." And he's trying to protect him. And then they end up seeing, like, the husband who just got married. He ends up getting caught. He ends up getting killed. And you can tell that, um, uh, you can tell from this, these kids, when they were younger, they didn't want to do this. They think it's screwed up. They think this is a horrible thing. But now we see them in the present day, and they're older, and they have to do this. And they're a part of this as well. Even though, as kids, they knew it was a bad thing. And in that moment in the barn, you can really see Daniel looking at this going, the cycle's just gonna continue. It's just gonna get like, it happened to me. That was me when I was a kid, and now like I'm part of this. And uh, yeah, it is amazing seeing him basically like, and you can look at this as like so many statements about like, you know, 
uh, about all kinds of rich people being stuck up causing problems in the world. Mm -hmm. Kind of being like a message of like the big message of this is like we kind of have to get rid of all this otherwise the cycle is just going to continue again and again. Like I also feel like this like a like a little like a a not like mentioning like how some traditions just should traditions, not Traditions, yes. yes. It's a big statement on traditions. Big statement on traditions and how some traditions are just really messed up and should not continue. Like, yeah, and uh, it's, and also like there's that great moment in which um, they say like, okay, we don't use the security cameras when we do this. We have to do this all like it did back in great great grandpa's time and we use the weapons from great great grandpa's time and then later on in the film when they cannot find her, which for anybody who is still wondering like what the hell is the plot of this film? The plot of the film is that uh, there's this family that runs a board game company. Like a board game, card game, even like it's a, sporting. Yeah, they own sporting, like, they own uh, sports teams. Uh, yeah, so they are a big billionaire company. Um, but they basically got their fortune by making by having their great great grandpa make a deal with the devil, and now whenever a new poison, new person joins the family, they have to play a game, and the game is randomly assigned to them by pointing to this box. The box comes out and says like what the game is, and if it's hide or seek, then you have to find them. And if you don't find them by dawn, then all of you die. But if you find them by dawn, you have to then do a satanic sacrifice. And you have to like kill the newlywed. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. They keep talking about how it's like, okay, we have to play this game exactly like it would have been played back in great great grandpa's time. Um, so they can't use security cameras, they can't use a modern day weapons, anything like that. And there comes a moment which after they have not been able to find her for the longest time, then they just go, why don't we just use the security? Like, fuck tradition. Like, nowhere in the rules did it say that we can't use security cameras. If great great grandpa had access to security cameras, he would have used them. <laughs> he absolutely would have. And then you see the dad, the one who's been like, no, 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 we have to follow this. He goes, yeah, you know what? That was really stupid. Why did, <laughs> what? What? Great grandpa probably would have done this. We're absolutely going to do this. And then um, Daniel's wife says, No, can, Alex is the one that. Alex. Oh. No, no, no. Daniel's wife says, Can we also use modern day weapons too? I've oh, got a yeah. gun in my purse. Can I just use that too? And he goes, No, no, we use the old weapons. That's tradition. And it's like, So. So he is totally just picking and choosing yeah. what traditions he wants mm -hmm. to follow. Mm -hmm. And if you pick and choose what traditions you want to follow, then tradition means nothing in here. You're just using it for whatever reason, kind of backs up whatever it is that you're trying to say. It's like, yeah, man, this is a smart, smart film. It is a really smart film. Um, uh, and we were talking about, like, the characters in here, how every single one of them is a different caricature of, like, a rich person stereotype. I... Again, watching it this time around, it's just blew me away, like, how distinct every single one of them is. Uh, like, the sister is, like, the never-grew-up party animal uh, uh, rich person, but her husband, uh, Fitch, is the, like, I'm in this just for me uh, kind of rich guy. Then, the, then Daniel's wife is the cold-hearted, I-will-do-anything-for-money type. Because uh, she came from nothing. Yeah, like which again, a little bit, little bit of information that you get on them. Like, you don't get stuff on every single one of them, but every now and again, you get stuff on each of them. Uh, and it gives you, like, so much, like, you want to know, oh my goodness, why on earth would Daniel's wife be so aggressive about this and so dedicated to this thing when she didn't, she wasn't even raised by this family. Why would she be embracing it so much? It's because she says, I came from nothing and I will do anything to keep this around. It's like, holy crap. Um, uh, the uh, mother in here, I love that she looks at uh, Samara weaving at the uh, new bride in here. Grace. Grace, thank you. She's looking at Grace and she's like, listen, I know they're all gonna look at you like you're an outsider because you didn't come from riches. I didn't either. So you're just like me, and I'm here with you. She's the person who uh, she's the person who married into money, but kind of became uh, yeah, but became one of them. Became one of them because at the end of the thing, when it all comes down to like whose side is she on, she immediately picks them. Uh, however. <laughs> You look at it like, oh man, how can they all choose it? I love that they still give you these little bits of information like, yeah, no, this thing is real. Like, any time in which, there's that moment in between uh, Alex and Grace when they're trying to escape, and she's going, why don't you just do this? He goes, no, 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 someone else tried to do that in our family, and they all die. Well, why didn't we just elope? No, 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 you can't elope, because if you elope, then we all die. Uh, and 
they basically say like, yeah, listen, this was a big family. People have tried everything that you were going to say we should try, and they all died because of it. I have seen enough consequences of this to know it's real. But the thing is, like, they leave it inconspicuous enough to know that is it like is it actually like something that the devil I does understand. or yeah. if it's just it's mere coincidence. coincidence like yes exactly that's another great thing about this you don't know until the very, very end, end whether or not this is real and i cannot tell you how much i love the ending because of how it plays into every angle of this <laughs> um we'll get into that in just a second like um, there's like one scene where like fitch is on his phone and he's like googling our satanic rituals bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> oh, i love that moment um because like he's never like had to like actually hunt down anybody for like if you want to talk about listen it's not like I'm coming in here and saying like all real men know how to use a crossbow no, 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 no. <laughs> not at all but they wanted to do something to kind of imply that Fitch was a guy who also never had to work a day in his life. Mm -hmm. And the way that they did that is that they handed him a crossbow when they were handing out the weapons, and his reaction was, what the fuck do I do with this? What am I, what? And listen, again, it's not like if you hand anybody a crossbow, they just instantly know how to use it. It is kind of an archaic weapon, and, nobody, and not everybody knows how to use even modern-day weapons. But they need to ha give him something that would make him say, I don't know how things work. Uh, and yeah, they chose the perfect thing for that. And so you just see him constantly on his phone, like trying to watch videos on how to use a crossbow. <laughs> uh, it is so good. Um, but as I was saying, they also have all these moments towards the end in which you want to hate this family. You want to look at every member of this family and go, all of you are monsters for doing this, but there's a moment at the end in which the mom is fighting with Grace, and she's going, if the choice is between you or my family, I'm going to save my family, and it's like, you kind of understand what she's doing, yeah, you kind of, she does have to save the life of her children, and you get it. Um, but now, going into the ending of this thing, which I have not gotten to talk about in one of these videos before, uh, the end of this thing, First off, Samara Weaving is a great badass in this film, and I love how she constantly has the perfect level of just... She constantly has that feeling of she cannot take any more of this, and yet she always finds, like, one notch higher to go. She always finds, like, one notch... Like, as the situation gets worse and worse, you think she is at her breaking point, and then she breaks even more, and then she breaks even more, and then all kind of leads up to that final scream that she does, when she's on the table and then she is able to break free and she grabs the knife and she's just pointing at all of them. That scream she gives there in the end is one of the craziest screams I have ever seen in a film. I like her because like she feels so real. Very real. And, like there are like so many like movies where like the girl is like a damsel in distress and like trips over herself all the time, or she's suddenly a badass out of nowhere and beats the shit out of everybody, but this film has that perfect balance yes. between them. Because she is competent, she can think these things through, but she can't like she doesn't instantly know how to save the no. day and this moment I think I mentioned this in the original review this moment this moment this <laughs> movie has a moment in there that any other film like this would have saved for the last 10 minutes of the film and they do this at like the half hour mark in here and it's because they immediately turn around afterwards and go, you don't know how to fucking do it. Like, there's the moment in which, like, her wedding dress is beat up. She's taking her shoes off and she's put on comfortable sneakers. And she goes in the hunting room, grabs the rifle and, like, a bandetta of ammunition. Like, a big elephant shotgun in there. And she comes walking in and it's got that moment where the camera, like, pans up her with, like, triumphant music playing. Any other film, that would have been the finale of the movie, when she decides it's time for me to kick ass back now. And then she just goes on revenge trying to hunt them down. We see her then, like, trying to sneak out of the house, and then she tries to, like, take out the butler, and she points the gun at the butler and fires it, and nothing happens, and he goes, the ammunition is just for show. That stuff doesn't actually work these days. Uh, and, yeah, it just kind of turns the audience and goes, Nobody would be able to, like, 180 that quick. Uh, but she is still able to, like, think her way out, and you see her fighting and struggling. Yeah, like, I was, I actually thought, like, she was gonna, like, the movie was gonna spend its entire time, like, in the mansion. Like, the fact that she was able to, like, 
get out of the house and everything, I was impressed with. Cause like, when he got to that moment, I kind of wondered, this is, this is still counting for our theme, but I thought you were too late into it. Although I did say, oh, I will say, uh, you actually said that you won one of the themes we did this year to be cults, and it wasn't until the end of this movie that I went, fuck, this really would have fit that. <laughs> uh, so, sadly, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, but if we did do it, I should have said well, this. Well, there's back. always next year. Always next year. I will always be willing to watch this film again. <laughs> um... But yeah, uh, yeah, you see her like actually get out, but it's not even like she just like finds something that allows her to get out no. of there. She like gets the shit kicked out of her trying to get out of there. And I have said this, I've said this about the Evil Dead, and I say this about Ready or Not. You want me to like your protagonist in a horror film? Have them get the shit kicked out of them, and have them still keep fighting. And yeah, this is an amazing example of this. That's one of the reasons why I don't really care about like. Dwayne The Rock Johnson <laughs> or about Vin Diesel action films because both those guys have things in their contracts that say, I am only allowed to be hit this many times. And it's like, well, then fuck you. I don't care. I don't care. I want the hero of a film to be somebody who gets the shit kicked out of him. He gets knocked down, gets cut up and shot and battered and beaten and broken, and they still keep going. That's the character I like in a film. And man... There are so many moments where the worst possible thing that could happen to her happens to her, and she keeps going, and when she is just, like, losing her mind, you are right there with her. Mm -hmm. You are right there with her. That moment in which she finally breaks free, and the car comes up, and she asks for help, and the person just goes, get out of the road, you psychopath, and they just drive off. And she just goes on this long. I want to know if this was improv <laughs> because it feels so natural. Uh, it feels like no one could have sat down and written this. And she goes on just this long, expletive laden, like, rant. Like, I imagine the script saying, like, Grace starts swearing nonstop or something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, like, I want to see the, I really want to get the <laughs> Blu-ray of this to see if there are outtakes of, like, all the different, like, takes she did of this. Just all different, like, because she just goes, you cocksucking rich people, motherfucking pencil dick, motherfucking, and, like, just going on and on. And you have seen her go through so much shit up to that point. You're like, go, get all your system, because we feel that same way, too. We are there with you right now. I love that. Uh, but at the end of the film, she's been through so much, and even Alex has betrayed her. Which, yeah. Alex has betrayed her because he sees Daniel is dead and he doesn't realize that Daniel died because Daniel's wife shot him. Yeah, uh, it's like, I wonder what ha what would happen if Grace said, like, Daniel sacrificed himself to save me. It's what he, he wanted. So, yeah, it's that's the one thing is that's like, she could have said something in the moment. However, he did just walk in to find her murdering his mom. Mm, that's, and there's yeah, nothing really coming to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he sees that Daniel, Daniel was like the one guy trying to save Alex. Yeah, like... Daniel's whole job has been save Alex. Alex. And now Daniel died, which I love Daniel's big turnaround there. Daniel's big turnaround of he actually, like, decides to save Grace. I love that moment in there. Daniel is one of my favorite characters in here. Grace is the best character, but Daniel, like, close a second. Um, uh, and this all then comes around to, uh, um, then Alex decides, yeah, I'm with the family, and it kind of... You look at it, and he always knew if Grace got out, the family died, because that's part of the deal. So this whole time, he was fighting, thinking to himself, I'm going to save Grace, even if that means my family dying. But the moment he actually has to face his family dies, he goes, oh, you know what, now that I actually see it. I'm choosing my family. Yeah, honestly, like, seeing someone, like, die in front of you can, like, really change it perspective. Changes it. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things where part of me wants to look at this and go, well, that kind of stinks because this is just, you know, Alex's big turn at the end all kind of comes from his perspective, from a, a trick. It all kind of comes from a misunderstanding of him thinking that Grace murdered Daniel. But even if he didn't know that, he still knows for, but even if he did know that it wasn't Grace who did that, he just saw Grace murder his mother. And that absolutely did happen. But this entire time, Alex knew if Grace escaped, when he was trying to help her escape, his family was going to die. He just saw what it means for his family to die. So even if it's a misunderstanding, it is still Daniel at that moment realizing 
oh. You mean my Alex? Family, sorry, yeah. <laughs> it, it was still Alex in that moment realizing, oh, my family is going to die. Actually seeing that is different from me thinking about it happening. I choose my family. Uh, so yeah, he did absolutely. So I still think that that twist works. I still think that his character turn works there. And it all comes down to that moment where Grace is able to escape right before she die, right before she gets stabbed. She takes the knife. She's like, she is just completely lost in there at that moment. And then the sun comes up. Mm -hmm. They open up the curtains. And I cannot describe to you how blown away I was when this originally happened. And you see that nothing happens. Everything's fine. It is totally okay. And all of them are just there like, um. And they have that moment of like having to turn to Grace of like, oh. Uh, trying to explain themselves. Trying to explain themselves. Uh, and just seeing like that little weenie, uh, like just seeing Alex, this little weenie husband of hers, and be like, Honey, you know that. Uh, don't fucking touch me. Uh, that line read was so good. Uh, and then, of course, Fitch having to come in there with the line, okay, what do we do about her? Because, yeah, they just spent the entire night trying to kill her. Even if it was for nothing, they're all going to jail. Yeah, she's a witness. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so this movie has an amazing plot twist with that. And then it comes in here with the second plot twist, in which the ant picks up the giant, like, I don't know, what the fuck, it, axe, that's what she picked up. She picks up this giant axe, and goes, the girl still dies. Blam! Explodes in a fountain of blood. Like a comedic explosion. It was just a delayed reaction. Yeah. <laughs> they were using delay-based netcode. Um, <laughs> The devil, the devil's on like a like little. It's a long trip from hell. So yeah. the devil just has like. He doesn't a have a lot of bars. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's bad reception in hell. You shouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, and just seeing like the family's reaction, I like. That's not something that you can look at and just be like, oh yeah, that was totally like that's a coincidence. No. No, she that's. She explodes, <laughs> and then you have watched this horrible family throughout this entire film. The only one good member of the family, in fact, even like the only one and a half good members, because the mom was still like, she was just doing this to save her family. Both of them are now dead. So it's just the shitty people left. And you see the ant explode, and just having to watch each of them just get their comeuppance. One by one. Like seeing uh, uh, Daniel's wife turning to the empty chair there where the devil was supposed to sit and just going, it said, I didn't mean any of that. Like all of her talk about like, I would do anything to protect this. Oh yeah? Well, here's what that looks like. I didn't mean that. No, no, I'm not even part of this family. I'm, I'm at like the moment when she was like, oh no, me coming from nothing is way better than this. <laughs> uh, the moment she has to realize that and she's just immediately trying to back out, explode, doesn't matter. Fitch, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Explode. Uh, seeing the dad come there, I did everything right and I'm in control. Blam, explode. The mom right out there with her kids and you just see like the two tiny explosions first <laughs> and then the big explosion. But then seeing uh, Alex, seeing Alex try to be like, baby, baby, it's okay. It's, 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 I, didn't, I didn't mean any of that. Don't fucking touch me. <laughs> Again, that line reads so good. And just seeing him like be like, no, no, he... He's, I got out, I left the family for a long time, and I found you, and you made me a better person, baby. And it's like, him just trying to walk back <laughs> what he just did. Oh my god, that was so good. It's like a cake that says, sorry, I tried to kill you. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you're not going to make this up, you ass. You chose your path on this one. You chose the murder cult on this one. The best is like when she takes off the ring and says, I want a divorce and just flings that at me. And that's what makes him explode. <laughs> and it makes me almost wonder if it was just really perfect timing or if it was a thing of like, no, 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 he actually was was like he actually was kind of saved there at the end by his relationship with her because because he was married to her it wasn't going to be like he wasn't going to explode and the mojo just says fuck you <laughs> he just bans like nope all right she, she got annulled everybody divorce is happening you done you out you dead 
Uh, and then my favorite part is when she turns to the table and when she turns to the chair, the empty chair, and the fire flares up, and you just see the old guy. I don't remember his name. LaBelle. 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 La that was it. LaBelle, yeah. And you just see Mr. LaBelle there in the chair, just nod at her. And then you cut back to her and she just goes, Fuck. <laughs> that is, again, the perfect <laughs> line read. That is the line read of somebody who just found out that the devil exists and that satanic magic is real. But she also just survived the worst night of her entire life, so she doesn't have the energy to be that surprised. <laughs> that is the perfect line read on that moment. Uh, again, we, I bought this on Amazon, uh, on Amazon Prime uh, digitally because I couldn't wait for the actual like physical tape to be delivered to me through mail. But I do still want to buy the Blu-ray of this just to listen to the director commentary because mm -hmm. I know she's on there and I want to hear what she had to say about some of these performances. She is amazing in this. Uh, yeah, I think this is one of the best horror movie endings. This is one of the best movie endings. Mm -hmm. I've ever seen. I love everything about the ending of this. Um, yeah, it's like, it's so satisfying. Like, it's so Because <laughs> it's like, if that if the twist didn't happen, I feel like even if the rich people did go to jail, it's like, they would have bought their way out. Yeah. It's like, because they have the money to do it. It's well, like, also, and the thing that makes it so good, as I said, is that if they went to jail, you would have gotten little bits of them. Like, you know, you would have gotten, like, Daniel's wife in the backseat of the car, like, talking to Fitch, like, so how are we gonna get out of this? Shut up, man. Like, just something like that. This moment, because each of them are now faced with the consequences, excuse me, why get too excited to get hiccups? Because each of them are now faced dead on with the consequences of the action, you see each of them, like, going through the mental process mm -hmm. of having to face everything that's happened. So, like I said, the dad freaking out, Daniel's wife freaking out about all this stuff. That is so much more satisfying and really cuts to the core of each of these characters. So much more than if they had just gone to jail. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And again, like, what are they going to do? Like, if the police showed up at this thing, there's seven witnesses or something there who would go, oh, yeah, she did this. She killed all these people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It absolutely, like, this is the only way this could have been in. And again, it's the, it's not the fact that it's a twist, it's that it's a twist, and then just the perfect amount of waiting, and then another twist on top of it. It's all about timing. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect timing. I I think I gave this movie like a 9.5 when I first watched it. I'd give this a 10 now. I, I still love the hell out of this movie. Um, but yes, oh my goodness, we have talked too much today. <laughs> we were also going to do a review of the boys today, but my mouth, my mouth is literally <laughs> numb. Uh, 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 yes, I'm going to go and chew some chiclets, uh, get this mouth kind of exercised <laughs> again. Uh, and that is it for our reviews right now. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in for another episode of the Post Recap Reaction. We only got two more days on this theme, and I have completely forgotten to tell people but uh, if you have a movie that you want us to watch, next, week, uh, next week's theme, I can't talk. Next week's theme is viewer request week. So if you have a movie that you want us to watch, leave it in the comments down below or contact me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Professor Thorgy. This is pretty much your last call to get your request in because by the time that this video goes up, we will have already started watching some of these. So then your last call to get your request in, let us know what you want to see us watch down below. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And as always, happy, happy Halloween. Halloween.